G'day guys, uh, Wes down here from the Down Under Centre. Um, I'm joined uh, by Jed for her um, from Dynamic Refrigeration uh, based in Darwin. So uh, firstly, Jed, uh, thank you for making the time, mate, um, to make this little uh, little video with us. And, and today we're here to talk about the jobs you've got offered, um, sponsorship opportunities for refrigeration mechanics. And then you've kind of got a secret, um, another, another role, which kind of, I guess, flows between Sparkies, Fridges, maybe the odd fitter as well. Um, but firstly, mate, um, let's just have a quick chat. So where is, uh, tell us how, how long has Dynamic Refrigeration been running for, mate? Yeah, thanks, Wes. Yeah, so Dynamic Refrigeration, we've been operating for the last 15 years. Um, so we're based in the, the commercial sector and specifically around the hospitality industry. So we're working in pubs, cafes, restaurants. We've got cold storage facilities. Um, the business started out with myself out of the back of a ute um, and we we're looking after the, the Coca-Cola contract for the Northern Territory. And it just sort of morphed into looking at, you know, different refrigeration, air conditioning and, um, you know, pretty much everything in between. So, yeah, we've, we've grown the business now. We are up around about sort of 15 to 16 people on staff. We've got two companies as well. So we started up a second company, Dynamic Catering Solutions, around about uh, five years ago, just purely because the industry was asking us to, to do what we're doing in the refrigeration and air conditioning in the commercial catering equipment supply. So, yeah, we we're fortunate enough to get an opportunity to start up there. So as we've been growing over the years, we've just, we've found, um, you know, uh, it's it's been difficult to try and get, you know, good quality, you know, tradesmen. And we've been finding that, um, you know, we've got a couple of people from overseas previously. Yep. Um, and they've just been solid workers with, you know, really good skill set, good attitude, and you know that's really sort of helped our business along. So we're sort of reaching out to some more people at the moment, um, and we've got sort of three main roles that I'd like to fill. Um, right. If I could get, yeah, one of them has been the refrigeration air, con air conditioning mechanic. So we're looking for, you know, someone that's based more in the refrigeration side that yep. has air conditioning experience in just standard DX. It doesn't need to be chilled water. Okay. Um, but yeah, that that is just your standard sort of service and repair uh, technician that can do everything from, you know, cool rooms, freezers, uh, fridges, um, you know, everything like ice machines, we do a few beer systems and a number of different stuff, but it's everything around hospitality. So anything mm -hmm. that's sort of air conditioning or refrigeration in a hotel, pub, club, um, you know, we sort of look after it. Perfect. So that's that's our that's our sort of one of our main roles that we're chasing. Yeah. Um, and we're also got a uh, an appliance technicians role uh, that we're trying to fill as well. So that's for the same sort of market, but we've gone more into um, repairing appliances like your, you know, dishwashers and meat slicers and combi ovens and um, more appliance workers, appliance work because our, you know, our catering uh, business is growing and we're selling a lot more equipment. We, we service what we sell. So, right. um, that's that's why we're trying to fill that spot. Yeah. Um, and the, the the last one, which was you know a pretty specialised field, is with uh, McDonald's. So uh, a McDonald's technician, specifically, you know, that's trained in the you know the IBDs, which is automated beverage mas machines with um, uh, McDonald's, the the frozen Coke machines, the the, the soft serve machines, the grills all the appliances in McDonald's. So, you know, it's a, it is a specialised field, but we're yeah, hoping we can try and, you know, find someone that's got enough skill set that can cross over and sort of get into that. Yes. Um, and if someone's already got some previous experience, great. But, yeah, we, we're also looking at, you know, putting people through some training to, to get up to speed with that as well. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so let's talk about um, uh, salaries, mate. So what are you offering? How, how much are you paying them, mate? Yep. So we're paying up to around about forty-five dollars an hour. Yeah. Um, that's on full time. So with that, like we we base it off skill set. 
So, you know, depending on someone's level of experience in the, in the trade and, and experience, you know, that goes a long way to what we can offer as a, you know, an hourly rate. Because it's all about, you know, trying to get the efficiency of you know, like billable hours and that stuff. Right. That's like the skill set is only a portion of it for us as well. Like we, we really like to hire for attitude and train for skills. So we're trying to find people that are a cultural fit because we're, a, we're an organisation that, you know, we're kind of like a family business that like to, um, you know, pride ourselves on really good work, but yep. also connection between the team and help each other out. So, well, well um, Jed, I will, um, I'm going to interrupt. Sorry, sorry, mate, interrupt you there. Mate, um, I met you a few yep. days ago and your enthusiasm, firstly, about Darwin and where you are, those photos you sent us about your fishing and um, also on your motorbikes and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and the chats we've had too about Darwin I think it's it's an interesting area because when I was traveling Darwin was just bloody awesome like it's hot you know like you know it does get hot but it's totally different living to when I was living in the UK it's, it's actually probably polar opposites uh sort of living if you're an outside if you're an outside person like a bit of heat it's got great venues good pubs the scenery is just well, you can go in like like week weekends away camping in Victoria to weekends away camping in Darwin. They don't really compare. Sorry to my Victorian friends, but um, yeah. yeah, it's just a reality. Okay, so um, now visa wise, so you're um, happy to sponsor the right person as well, uh, which is good. Um, yep. And you're also happy for people to apply directly for these roles um, if they're in the process of getting a visa and then before they get there. Um, regarding tools and um, vans and everything, is there something you um, will assist with supplying or would you want them to supply their own tools, uh, a van? Yeah, definitely. There's a look, uh, um, yeah, I'd love to talk a little bit more about Darwin and what we get up to on the weekends, but I'll, I'll, I'll come we'll, back we'll to that. We'll be there forever, mate, between us. Yep. But um, yeah, we've we've actual like company like tools and what what an applicant will need to bring to the, the table is we have a, a company vehicle for you and a phone. Yep. Uh, we have all those standard uh, larger tools that you need for the trade, like your ladders, uh, re reclaim unit, back pumps, scales, you know, electronic leak detectors. We ask um, people to have all their hand tools and drills and bits and pieces that yep. is pretty much standard that everyone has. Yep. Um, they're good, good vehicles. We're, we're very much, you know, we, we, we very much are a professional company. So we like clean vehicles. We're, we always maintain them. They look neat. They're tidy. Um, you know, we don't like broken equipment because, you know, if it's broken, you can't, you know, read the instrumentation correctly or it doesn't do the job. So, yep. you know, everything is neat and tidy. So yeah, that's that's a little bit about you know kind of what you know tools and you know vehicle you'll get. Perfect, perfect. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's perfect. Okay, um, all right. So the salary is good. We're doing sponsorship, um, and if they've already got a visa in place, hundred percent. Obviously, um, we've got to hit about the uh, talk about the uh, licensing part as well. So as a refrigeration mechanic, it's um, there is gap training involved as well for the migrant when they get there. Um, you've had apprentices on in the past, um, Jed. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, we've yep. had yeah a number of apprentices that come through the business. Um, but yeah, for when when you're trying to get your you know when you get skills assessment and you, you're actually, you know, trying to do your gap training here. So you've got to go down to generally like um, yeah, Bendigo to, to do a couple of days, like skills assessment where they'll assess your trade qualifications. Yep. Um, when, once you've received that, then you actually lodge something with Charles Darwin University up here yep. and you're, you're enrolled as a trainee. So you'll be supervised you need to do 12 months supervised work where you'll fill out a log book, which is digitally like, um, which is digital these days. Yep, so e-profiling. E-profiling, yep. yep. Um, so after that 12 months of demonstrating, you know, what what you've been currently doing with with um, whoever you, you go with, uh, then you, you'll do a bit of a capstone. Uh, capstone just is covering off everything that you know what's... Um, you know, you know your trade. You you're up with the you know the legislation yep. and safety. Australian standards, etc. Yep, and yep. then you know they'll they'll issue you with your trade qualifications for Australia. So that's very important for us. Um, yep. So you know we can only have a certain amount of 
um, trainees at um, one time. So we Correct. we want that process to happen, you know, quite quickly. It is pricey too. Like some of the some of the time, it's it'll be up in between like five to seven thousand to actually get through that process. Yeah, and we've we've had a number of people who've gone through that process before. So yeah, just like to be upfront. Just- yeah, Jed, that's really good, mate, that you understand that. So just to recap, so um, for people that are listening, licensed trades, plumbers, refrigerations, uh, mechanics, and, and sparkies. Now, each state and territory is absolutely different to what that person requires. So the very first thing we always tell clients is to do is to contact us um, about it, but also contact the regulator. Uh, you contact the regulator. Um, again, each state and territory is generally different, but if you hold your OTSR, so if you did your skills assessments, refrigeration mechanic, you'll then be issued with a provisional license. Um, you'll then enroll with um, Charles, Dow- uh, Charles, Charles Darwin University, yep. tongue twisted that one, um, to commence the gap training. And generally, um, the gap training will be a two week block, um, sometimes evenings, just depending on the numbers that they've got. Um, and then, as Jed mentioned, you get e profiling, which, uh, which he will work with on your behalf. So, Jed, it's really good that you um, are familiar with that because lots of employers are nothing against them. It's just a different, it's a, it's a different pathway. Being a licensed trade, I think you'll agree that everything you do in Australia you need a license for. Um, yes, it will cost them money, you know, managing expectations, it, you know, it will cost some money. Being on a sponsored visa um, is a wonderful visa as well as if you're just arriving. Um, once the um, uh, once you do hold the license, it's obviously you know gives you a lot more freedom. But um, one thing that the you know migrants listening to this have to understand the gap training you need to have a job. So if you are getting off, you know if, if you're doing a job through your sponsorship and they're aware of the gap training, which which, which Jed obviously is, it's a huge benefit, guys, um, to that because you're sort of you're getting paid, you're working, good salary too, in a nice little area of the world, um, and. Jed knows what to do if you're e-profiling and then, you, you know, he's got to do it. So, so that's good. So we've touched based on that. We've got the salary written and everything. Um, we've got three jobs that you're looking for. Um, it's probably continuous as well, mate. You, you're obviously got a bit of growth happening in the business. We do. It's, it's really exciting, you know, for uh, the dynamic refrigeration and catering solutions. Like we've, we've, you know, been 15 years in the territory, um, you know, operating and, you know, I've been here for over 20 years. We're, we're really finding our feet and got a really good team. So the growth is, um, you know, what's in front of us is, yeah, great for, for everyone in the organisation with opportunities. So, yep. you know, we're, we're constantly looking at new, um, you know, in, new contracts and new, new opportunities that are coming up now that we are the size that we are. Um, and, yeah, that, you know, for us it's about, you know, making sure that we can, you know, invest in our team to to grow with the business as it as we're scaling it so yeah there is constant you know opportunities to move into different sectors if you you know like refrigeration air conditioning we've got beer systems specialized equipment in mcdonald's um you know the appliance stuff uh we're doing more sort of defense contracts we've done projects you name it we've we're sort of got a finger in most pies in the territory Excellent. All right, mate. I'm going to put you on. I'm going to put you under the spot here a little bit. And apologies if I do, but um, yep. The okay. So you mentioned um, just uh, just go over. So how much an hour are you paying? So we're we're paying up to forty five dollars an hour. So up to forty five. And how many how yeah. many hours a day, mate? Are you doing? So we're doing around about eight. Like our standard work work day is eight hours. So eight to four thirty. Yeah. Uh, with a half an hour unpaid uh, lunch break through the middle of the day. Perfect. Um, okay, so I mean, look, you know, up to forty-five bucks an hour is a, a very good salary, um, mate. Cost of living. If someone was off the top of your head, if you don't know it, mate, it's not a problem. But just sometimes yeah. it's good to to do. We probably should have pre-warned you about some of these questions. But um, mate, cost of living and all yeah, that down. Yeah, what's a what's a rental? I don't know, like a three or four bedroom house. What are they getting rented out for? Or you know, house prices at the moment. Is it skyrocketing yeah, look, like it, other areas of Oz? It it certainly is. Where's like a you know. There's a lot of people moving to the territory for all the right reasons, um, you know. So it is driving the market. Um, so yeah, you're looking up anywhere from sort of you know five to sort of you know six fifty a week, depending on you know how nice of a place you, you want. So yeah. there are different areas in the territory that you can move to that you know will give you better you know um, better rates on on you know rent and stuff like that, but. If you if you were to average it out, like you're probably for a three bedroom house, you're looking around about sort of five to five fifty. Yeah, 
Okay, cool. So, so do you pay your guys weekly, monthly, or fortnightly? Uh, we pay weekly. Okay, you pay weekly. All right. So yeah, they're probably we, so they're probably bringing in about what anywhere from sort of fifteen hundred to a bit more a week, isn't it? Really? Um, that's, that's right. Yeah. So you know, it's like we we worked out with the you know when you're on forty five dollars an hour plus you know a company vehicle which is you know fifteen grand a year plus super um, plus you know the phone and overtime you're looking overtime you're doing roughly um, it's about anywhere it's been sort of four four hours average a week yeah um, and then you got call outs so yeah. there's a roster an after hours uh, roster which you get a hundred dollars in the hand for just for holding the phone yeah. and there's a, a couple of hundred dollars for each call out and then you pay get pay double time after a certain like the first hour of that call out so you know we worked out that you, you're getting around about 138 thousand a year wow on okay, average there you go. 45 dollars an hour so it, it is really good for you know for a blue collar worker um you know which you know I, I see ourselves as professionals you know and yeah. I, I think a lot of trades I don't know they they, they tend to not have that stigma, but you know, for us, when you when you you know you're you're getting that kind of money, and you know you, you show up every day like we do, which is very professional, and create a service that is trying to help people and help businesses succeed. You yeah. know, this is our mentality at DRS. No, good stuff, man. Very well said. And look, you know, when it comes to migrants as well, I think it also takes a special person to migrate. I've always said this, you've got the emotional side of migration. Um, it's not easy, you know, taking a family from one side of the world to the other. I'm just in the middle of that now. Um, yep. or just arrived and done that. Um, but it definitely, you know, has its perks and if it's for you. And I think what you'll find too, Jed, is because it does take a special person to migrate, lots of people might say, yes, they want to, whatever. Um, but when they're actually there and they and they get into it, very few come home, which is, you know, which is a good result. Um, yeah, but what look. they put in too for your business, you'll be, you know, there's so many, you know, for, for being that person who wants to migrate, generally they are a little bit professional. They are sort of a bit proud of themselves. And I guess, I guess you'd say they've achieved and want to have that mentality to try new things at a cost as well. Cause you know, skills assessment fees and everything, none of it's cheap, yep. uh, but that's what, that's just what the cost is to get there. So I think in return, you actually are going to get some really nice candidates that will match um, your company culture. Yeah, definitely. Whereas, look, like money to me is always a byproduct. So, you know, if you're doing a good job and you love what you do, you, you're going to get paid well for it. And, you know, the joy comes for me when I see people, you know, transitioning and making that, you know, challenging sort of transition from another, you know, country into Australia and, and and we try and, you know, facilitate that as smoothly as possible to support these people. But the, the real joy for me is to see these guys, like, flourish when they're here. So, yeah. you know, with our, with our business, you know, I've seen a number, we've got a number of people in our organisation and, and, you know, James um, McGrath, which is one of our, um, you know, guys that we sponsored over seven years ago, is now our service manager. And to see, you know, what he's done for his family over here and buy a house, you know, he's just bought a new four-wheel drive, which we, we go out on weekends, four-wheel driving together. You know, he's got a great reputation in town just because he's, you know, such a hard worker and dedicated to, um, you know, making sure everyone does a great job. He'll go out and get, you know, because we work in that hospitality industry and you do the right thing by these people, you know, you'll go out and get a coffee. You know, you go out oh, yeah. and you go speak to the owner and have a few beers and you get invited to different things. And it's just, it's so nice to see. It's the Aussie spirit, you know, mate. It's the Aussie spirit. Oh. When I was traveling, that's what it's about. You just, it's that beautiful Aussie spirit. And you've definitely got it. I, I'm going to say up there because I'm down in Victoria. So up there, yeah. you've definitely got it, Jed. So yeah, that's perfect. All right, Jed, what we'll do, mate, we'll keep this short and sharp. Obviously, you'll be around. We'll try to get into webinars, events and everything. And, uh, we'll try and put a little thing together on Darwin as well because I think it's a place that's um, got lots of potential and lots to offer migrants. So, Jed, thank you very much for your time. We'll send these to people. Um, guys, if you're interested in taking a job uh, with Jed, what we do is you come back through the Down Under Centre. We'll send you out the email or if you just contact us. Um, Jed wants us to vet you all first for obvious reasons. We specialise in migration. He's just got great positions over there.
So come uh, come make contact with us. Um, if we can either for a sponsored visa or a skilled visa, we'll then um, put you in contact with Jed. Um, and then from there, you guys can um, have a chat and see if you're lucky enough to be offered a sponsored visa or if you've already got the visa and you're going. Uh, and then it just flows from there. So Jed, you're an absolute star, mate. I can't wait to come down and visit you at some point. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll stop recording, mate. And we'll um, yeah, thank you very much. No worries at all, Ed. Thanks for your time, mate. And yep. No worries. Good